Cafe Anyway. Here we are at Cafe Anyway. It's Mike's Daddy Podcast. Somewhere in Podcaster Valley, the last place on earth, it is FF episode 2868. I'm Mike Matthews. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth in the land of Ameritopica. Lots of topicas. Oh, wow. What a day. What a life. What a world we live in. It's true. And I'm singing this song and I'm done. And I should have just gone with something a little bit like 80s inspired, maybe. Mike's Daily Podcast. Let me see. Uh, Depeche Mode, 80s. Should I gone with that a little? Maybe uh, Tina Turner. Mike's Possibly Daily Journey. Podcast. Let's jump into the 90s. Yeah. Deep Blue Something. What happened to that band? They're gone. I love the one line in that song, though, Breakfast at Tiffany's. And I hate when things are over and there's so much left undone. It's so true. When something's over, so much left undone. And people go to movies to think back on interesting times. Those of us that remember the first Despicable Me when that came out eons ago. I think it was one of... uh, uh, Stephen Steve Carell's one of his first uh, cartoon characters that he did in a movie in a CGI movie. Well, Despicable Me Four is now over, taking with the million the minions taking their millions. A uh, one hundred and twenty two point six million dollars it debuted with after a historically bad first half of the year. Looks like the box office is suddenly booming. Minions are arguably the most bankable force in movies today. The original Despicable Me and the two sequels and two Minions spinoffs have made close to or over one billion dollars. Insane. Overall tickets are down more than 40% from those levels in 2019, pre-COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, And here's today's Oh, the podcast pictures of a bird. That's right. There was this very cool bird that I saw at Jack London Square. See it at mikesdailypodcast.com. This this bird just let me get really up close to it. and t- I didn't even zoom in to take this picture. I just got my phone really close to it and took a picture. See all the past podcast pictures at mikesdailypodcast.com. And speaking of P- Pixar, Disney's Pixar, Inside Out 2... <laughs> Oh, and the late great Basil the Boxer used to go to Jack London Square all the time with me. Speaking of Jack London Square. And I saw a guy with a a German Shepherd, and he had one of those ball launcher thingies. And he'd he'd throw it. uh, This uh, was an area near the ferry building. I don't think technically you're supposed to let your dogs run around on this big grass lawn area, but this guy was. And he would throw the ball, launch the ball. The German Shepherd would run over and get it and bring it back and then just chew it for a while in front of him and then drop it. And it's, and the guy didn't say anything like drop it or try and get the ball. He just waited till the dog dropped it. And then he immediately grabbed it again with that long thing that, that captures the ball. It's like the, the big st- plastic stick that has the nice elasticity with it. This show is clean. And then he'd launch the ball again. And this German Shepherd was going crazy, loving it. So I talked to him afterwards, the guy, and I said, wow, that dog's really good at retrieving that ball and bringing it back. You guys have worked out a great system. He goes, no, I didn't teach the dog. The dog taught me. He said that the dog's dad and granddad apparently were the same way. So he, but he said, Jack London Square He goes, if you move here, he said, when I moved here, I realized I needed to get a dog because everybody that lives in Jack London Square there in Oakland has a dog and they're they're walking their dogs and it's it's a very dog friendly place. And Jack London, Jack London wrote about dogs. So there we go. But on to other art, (laughs) if you'll call Inside Out 2 or Despicable Me 4 art, even though it's all a bunch of sequels and treacles and quad treacles. Quad Quintals Disney's Pixar Inside Out 2 Cleared 1 billion dollars In ticket sales Worldwide 
And then A Quiet Place, day one, which is technically the third movie in the franchise, it came in above expectations. Mike is on it, man. Man, go where no man has gone before. We love it, Mike. And Deadpool and Wolverine, that is going to be coming out soon. Oh, let's see, $160 million is what that's anticipated to get. So Hollywood summer is looking up. You know what else is looking up? Up in the air, airports. Of course, Boeing have all all kinds of problems Boeing is having, but airports are bustling this summer. Record summer air travel demand isn't translating to record U.S. airline profits because there's higher labor and other costs that have eaten into the airline's bottom lines. This is Mike's Podcast Picnic. And we're enjoying a delicious picnic. I brought the sun tea. I made it when the sun was scorching hot in the Bay Area. I made some tea and I, then I froze it. Or I didn't freeze it. I chilled it. And now we, we're having it and enjoying it here at Cafe Anyway. So U.S. airlines have increased capacity, flying about 6% more seats in July than they did a year ago. Flights between the U.S. and Europe and coach are going for... Got through that. I got into it. <laughs> $892 on average. Now, a year ago, that was almost $200 more at $1,065. So now at $892 on average. Airfare was down nearly 6% in May from the May previous in 2023. Some travelers have been opting for tips in late spring, trips rather, in late spring and early summer. When raising, you are a man, sometimes you wear stretchy pants. Raising questions about late summer demand. So there might be a big rush towards the end. Delta, America's most profitable airline, is set to report. Oh, they got, uh, let's see. They did report already. And I'm not sure what they said. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth in the land of Ameritopica. Let's see, it said the changes. They've adopted new rules for flight attendants, uniforms. They've banned flag pins from other countries. And I don't have a about their... Their stocks fall, okay, as rising capacity to meet demand hurts profits per passenger. There you go. All that I got from Rob Black. I produce anyway. his, I produce his podcast. We're at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, the last place on earth. And yes, he has heard on AM 1220 KDOW weekday mornings. And then he's also on Cron TV in the 9 o'clock hour, Monday through Thursday. So uh, speaking of interesting business type folk... Elon Musk And speaking of flying But into space He has grand plans For Mars colonization And he has a long term dream To create a new species A new species On the red planet As the New York Times Noted And this You know I mean people You know people get stuck on stupid You know what I mean That's very true And this is from the website Futurism.com In its expansive profile on the billionaire's Martian pipe dream Which includes among its revelations as alleged grandiose offer to see the future colony with his own um, DNA we shall say Musk has repeatedly floated the idea of a new species MTV News You hear it First Yes And by M we mean Musk Musk News But yes, uh, built for the ravages of the planet's dry heat. He says, I think it's quite likely that we'd want to bioengineer new organisms that are better suited to live on Mars. Humanity's kind of done with that over time by sort of selective breeding. He said that in 2013. Over the ensuing decade, the multi-hyphenate business owner has, according to the people close to him who spoke with the New York Times, repeated the idea... To SpaceX employees and others in the company's Have orbit. Do. Things to do. Things to do. People in the company, I guess he's talked about that. With these things to do, like going to Mars. Didn't they just have an experiment where they had people staying in a 
a climate that is similar to Mars, or it, it would be a simulation as if these people were living on Mars and they were isolated from the Earth. And whenever they tried to talk to the Earth in communications, there was a 20 minute lag time. And these people were just recently let out. And it, it took over a year for this, for this test. So they were secluded for over a year. That's amazing. And that just wrapped up. How would you be able... I would not... That's crazy. Although this world is crazy. As we have heard of recent events. And all that has happened with that. Now, AI... People were scared as can be a year ago when AI was really ramping up. You will travel into the incredible universe. Google has recently said, and they've got their Gemini thing that they're doing with AI. And I remember the other day I was asking, because I got a Samsung phone. It's got the Droid, the Google Droid uh, operating system on there. And I asked it a question and it asked me if I wanted to install Gemini. I said, no, not yet. But Google is doing robots with this Gemini as well. Google showed some examples of how the AI powered robots function in the workplace. Uh, This article from the folks at Inc. Inc. I-N-C dot com, like incorporated dot com. Uh, they said that, the, and this is from TechCrunch as well. One example shows the robots being asked by a user to take him somewhere he can draw something. After a moment, the robot matches up this request with what it knows about objects that can be drawn on and where they are, and it leads the Googler to a whiteboard. This article says, though it sounds simple, this is actually a higher level of reasoning that's much more human-like than many earlier AI robot systems have been capable of. The Alexa example is good here again. Alexa is clever, but only understands very specific commands. The Royal Trump Tweet Decree. 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 Yes, and you, of course, by now know of that news of uh, what happened with Trump and, and his ear being grazed and just completely frightening when that news was coming out on Saturday. And then Biden immediately clapping down on that, saying this can't happen. Oh, this, it, it's something we were afraid of happening. Um, depending on what side of the political spectrum you stand on, this is still something you should never stand for, any kind of assassination attempt. So what a day Saturday was. And that, yeah. It, hopefully none of this continues on. It's the first time we've had something big like this. Well, I guess something similar has happened in other countries recently. But with a president, we've not had anything like uh, at this level. I believe since um, Reagan? Was there anyone after that? that? I don't think so. You know, Teddy Roosevelt was actually shot uh, in, in the torso... And somehow survived. He he finished doing his speech and somehow survived. I was watching that Ken Burns documentary. And wow. That guy, he was pretty much a... And he came back, tried to win another term. He lost. But yeah, we'll see how Trump does. But yeah, interesting. But Trump immediately getting up and putting his fist up in the air, that is going to be very iconic. There's going to be many t-shirts made of that. And it, it's, it's going to be, yeah. I, I hate to say it, but politically it makes him look much stronger because he survived a bullet. It didn't do so well for Teddy Roosevelt, though. I don't think he won that election. He didn't win the election after he was shot. At, or he was actually shot. But pretty much, I'll have to go back and watch the rest of that Ken Burns documentary. It's fascinating. So Alexa is clever, but only understands very specific commands. And if you've used her in natural language systems, you'll have encountered that Alexa's very limited reasoning. When she complains, she doesn't understand 
until you tweak your wording. So they're working on all of that to make Alexa work better. Well, in this case, the what Google uses, the Gemini system. Yes. Transmutations. Transmutations. I know. Bands. All kinds of bands in the world mutating, turning into other bands. Well, in the history of bands, that was true. We don't have so many bands these days unless you really dig into the indie pop world and indie rock. And some people will do another project, a side project here and there. Bands mutations. So I'm going to somehow segue from that into the passing of two very famous people that I saw a lot of when I was growing up. You heard a lot from Dr. Ruth Westheimer. She passed away. She was in her 90s. 96 Yeah And this according to CNN You know She was a very interesting lady As a teenager she lived in Jerusalem And trained as a sniper With the Haganah Which later became part of the Israel Defense Forces In her 20s she studied in Paris And then immigrated to New York City Where she attended graduate school And eventually earned a degree from Teachers College at Columbia University. All flying saucers. Oh, flying saucers flying over cafe anyway right now. Outside, look who's here. Hello, Michael Matthew. It's Madame Rudebega. And I thought Madame Rudebega, I mean, the Dr. Ruth first time. It was very interesting. Ooh. Yes, she did kind of have the way you talk very similar to you. But I guess she was an inspiration for Madame Rudebega. Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Did you enjoy Dr. Ruth Westheimer? Yes. As you know, there's a real scary holiday coming up. Did you enjoy Paul Lynn? Yes. Did you enjoy Dwight Yoakam? No. What? Oh, it must have been the Sling Blade movie. He played kind of a scary character in that. With the lawnmower blade. Yes. That, does anyone remember that movie? Was that that was the nineties, wasn't it? Or early two thousands? Fascinating. And then some other piece of news you may have heard about Richard Simmons. He passed away. Uh, yes, sad news about him. He got us. He got us moving and exercising. If you watched the daytime TV in the eighties, you were jumping up and down. And doing all his exercise, his aerobicizing. He died at 76. Apparently, earlier in the year, he had posted a, crypto, a cryptic social media message saying that he was dying. And he later walked it back. But the next day, he shared that he had been diagnosed with skin cancer. He said, Please don't be sad. I'm dying. Oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is we are all dying. Every day we are getting closer to our death. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to enjoy your life to the fullest every single day. Get up in the morning and look at the sky and count your blessings and enjoy. There you go. Excellent advice from the late Richard Simmons. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we want to go to Mars someday, dear. Yeah, Mars. Do you know that? Yes. I feel as if, if on Mars, if you don't really enjoy the beautiful sandy landscape and, you know, not want to miss, if you miss trees this is not going to be the place for you being really far away from earth though that's an advantage but hey we'll see if in our lifetime we get to mars that will be fascinating and the end of this podcast is fascinating isn't it let's wrap it up here if you would like to call in and comment about anything that we covered today here is the phone number call mike at the cafe anyway hotline Area code 510-228-4640. And with more ways to reach me, we go to the Bain frame and A frame. Thank you so much for listening 
to Mike's Daily Podcast. And oh, yes, uh, all the past podcast pictures are at mikesdailypodcast.com. Enjoy. Thank you for listening. I'm wrapping it up now by not saying anything else after this. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.